Hi, welcome to the Stage 2 Emergency Aid Badge. My name is Paula and I'm a first aid instructor, but I'm also a Cub leader in Windsor. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do your Level 2. So you'll already have your Stage 1 badge, so you've either done that with us on one of our videos, uh, or you'll have done this with your leaders. If you want to watch the, the Stage 1 badge, we've got that on our YouTube channel as well. So what we're going to cover today in your Stage 2 badge is how we help people. So we're going to be looking uh, at the importance of getting help. We're going to look at how we do that, how we call 999. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, dealing with somebody that's unconscious, both breathing and non-breathing. Uh, we're going to have a look at reassuring somebody on the scene, trying to keep them calm and you calm as well. And then we're going to have a look at bleeding. So we're going to have a look at uh, small things from grazies right up to somebody who's bleeding quite seriously. Uh, we're going to have a look at somebody that's uh, had a burn as well. We are also going to have a look at somebody who's had an asthma attack and how we help them as well. Now, as we go along, you're going to need quite a few props. Um, so we film, film this all live. Uh, there's four different shows that have been pieced together to give you the video here. Um, so if you need them, just pause the video, pop off and get them, and then continue with the video as well. I will put in the description down below everything that you'll need to complete the practical elements in the course. Now, at the end of this, what you'll need to do is to print off a worksheet, uh, which again is at the bottom of this page. We'll also need you to print off a certificate, which a grown-up can sign off for you. And both the worksheet and the certificate can then be handed over to your leader, uh, and they'll be able to sign off your Stage 2 badge. So good luck. I really, really hope you enjoy the video. Do all the practical work, get your worksheet filled in, and we'll get you on your way to your level two badge session today. Um, so we've, we've got a big question for you to start with. I mean, you signed up for a first aid thing today. So what is first aid? Okay, so what do you think uh, first aid is, William? We've got uh, a couple of questions here for you. So here's a question for all of you boys and girls out there today. What is first aid? Do you know what first aid is? So we're going to give you some, some options here. Is it A, what's that, William? Learn to perform surgery. Is it learn to perform surgery? Is that what we're going to be doing today? Is it B, the help you give someone who is hurt or poorly? Or is it C, what mummy and daddy need after homeschooling for a month? So I want you to shout out your answers and see what we're doing. Okay, so what do you think it is? Is it A, B or C? So William, have you got your mum? Uh, what do you think it is? I think it's B. You think the it's... help you give to someone who is hurt or poorly. I think you're absolutely right. So that's exactly what first aid is today. So are you going to give yourself the, the success buzzer? The fantastic first aid buzzer that we've got over there. So that's our kind of... Uh, if we do a good first aid today, you're going to get that buzzer. If we get it wrong today, we've got a different buzzer there for you as well. So um, the big thing that I want you guys to realise is that no matter how young you are, how, and no matter how old you are as well, uh, learning some first aid skills is really, really important. You guys can make a really, really big difference. Um, really, really small children have saved people's lives before, so just knowing a few basic bits of first aid are really, really, really important. Never, ever be afraid. You can do what we need you to do, so don't ever be afraid of it, but it's really, really important that you do know some basic first aid skills. So if anyone asks you, uh, Cub Scouts, Dives, Brownies, Rainbows, if you want to go get in, stuck in and, and learn some first aid, don't do it. It's really, really important. Okay. Uh, now, the biggest thing for us always to remember is that there's always somebody to help you, okay? Um, so hopefully around you, you've got uh, grown-ups with you, you've got adults there that can come and give you, they give, give you a bit of help, they might have a bit more knowledge for you. But we're going to teach you how to get help today as well. That's one of the really big important things that we're going to learn today. So it's really, really important. There's always somebody that can help you there as well. Uh, so one of the biggest things we've got to remember is that even though we're going to train you to do some first aid, if somebody's hurt or poorly or you can't wake them up, it's really important to go and get a grown-up. It, we're not going to do this all on our own, uh, get as much help as possible. I always, if I'm having to do first aid, I would always try and get somebody to come and help me as well. All right? So uh, hopefully uh, there's somebody around you. But we're going to train you today that if there's nobody there that you can get help yourself as well. So what we're going to do now is the first thing that we ever, ever do when we get stuck in with first aid we, is we need to make sure that you are safe, okay? You are the most important person and we're going to look after you, okay? So what we've done, and I don't know if you've noticed it yet, we've hidden five dangers in our classroom today, okay? And we want you to be danger detectives. You're going to walk in and if something doesn't look right, you're going to have a good look around to see if there's any dangers around you there. OK, 
okay? So I've got my second little helper, Alex, okay? So come on in, Alex. So come and sit down here, Alex. Okay. This is Alex. Alex, how old are you? I'm eight. You're eight. And have you ever done any first aid before, Alex? Um, I haven't been with, but not, well, I haven't cubs. Yeah. And not um, anywhere else. And have you ever hurt yourself where you needed first aid? Yes, when I was very little, I broke my foot. You broke your foot. And how did you break your foot? I, I went to my friend's house and fell off. Um, their tree house. Yeah, exactly. And I think William hurt himself at the same thing at the same party and ended mm -hmm. up in hospital as well, didn't he? It was a great party. Um, right, so um, Alex has walked in. Now, Alex, we've got five dangers to spot. Now, William, are you ready with your buzzers? So if Alex gets yep. the right one, you press the orange, and if you get something that's not dangerous, then you press the purple one. So, Alex, see if you spot any dangers. Um, the snake. Yes, we've got a poisonous snake hanging from our banner today. Well spotted. Electric wire. The electric wires, yeah, absolutely. Good boy. Uh, glass. Yeah. Yeah. So a wet floor from a from a spilled glass as well. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Uh, well, you've got the electric chainsaw. Yeah, I think Daddy's Daddy's been doing his DIY today, hasn't he? So uh, yeah, we've got our chainsaw, which is definitely definitely a bit dangerous. That one. Yep. We'll get rid of that. Uh, and we'll get rid of the electricity. Anything else? What What might cause something somebody to, to be hurt? Um, yeah. yeah, that's right. So that's the really hard one, isn't it? We've got a cup of really hot coffee uh, just standing there in our lovely green box mug, uh, just sitting there. So if we were to get up and bang that, we might spill really hot liquid all over the place. So boys and girls, I, how did you get on with that? So did you manage to spot all five? I think some of them were really obvious. Some of the things that you look at when you walk into a scene, are really obvious, but sometimes it's the little things like the, like the cup that won't that will trip you up. Okay, so always look where you're kneeling, always look where you're putting your hands, always look where your head is as well. So it's always always a good one. Come have a sit down for us, Alex. There. So fantastic. So we are now danger detectives. Every time we walk in to do any first aid, make sure that you are really really safe before you do it. It's really really important. So um, really one, of, one of the big things that we promised you earlier was that we want to keep, uh, we want to get you help. So if something's wrong, uh, never try and do it on your own, okay? Um, it's really, really important that we uh, that we try and get help for, uh, on the scene as quickly as possible. So I'm going to ask the boys a question. So who can help us? If something, if something goes wrong and we need to do first aid, who can help us? Um, a parent. A parent, an yeah, absolutely an adult. Yeah, grown up. So, trained um, first aider. A trained first aider, that would be really good, wouldn't uh, it, if they were a trained first aider? Someone at a hospital or someone in the ambulance. Um, yeah, so it might be a paramedic. So if you yeah. shout for help, you never, you never know who you're going to get. So it might be a paramedic, it might be a fireman, it might be a policeman, somebody with more training with uh, with us as well. But who else can help us as well? An adult. Yeah, just a, just a grown up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Friend. Yeah, your friends can help you as well. So it might be that you're in a playing field at school and somebody uh, hurts themselves, and it might mean that your friend. Yeah, can go and get the teacher for you. So yeah, really important that we rely on people um, around us. They might have more training than us, um, so we, you know we need to um, get hold of them. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at how we get help. Okay, I think we might. How are the buzzers going? Are they okay? Still working? So just have a sit down for us. So we're going to have a look at how we let people uh, get hold of us. Okay, so how do we get hold of people when we need them? So how, how do you think you would get people to come and help us? Um, shout, shout help, shout help. Or... Shout help, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to shout help. So what, what are we going to shout? Help. Help. Okay, so we're going to have a bit of a shouting competition now. We're based in Windsor and we want to see if we can hear you out there, okay? So uh, we're going to get William to go first and see how loud he can shout, and then we're going to have Alex to go. And then we're going to have a go to see if we can hear you uh, in Windsor, okay? So, uh, William, can, let's have a go. Three, go. Three, two, one. Help! Okay, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Alexi. Three, two, one. Help! Oh, I think that was really, really good. So, should we count it down for everybody at home? Three, Three two, two, one. Help! Okay, we really, really want as many people on the scene as possible. Did you, did you hear anyone then? Yes. I think we could hear everyone. So, sorry to all the grown ups out there. Uh, yeah, we really, really, sorry about that. Um, right, so uh, now we've got help. Um, anyone around us should be coming uh, to our scene at this point. 
But what, what we want to have a look at is what happens if we can't get help from somebody just by shouting at them. So we're going to need to use uh, a phone, okay? So uh, first of all, what numbers do we call? So boys, do you know any numbers that we could call to get um, help from someone? Nine, 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 one, one, two. Perfect. So there are two emergency numbers that we can use. So 999 is a really, really good number for us to use. Uh, we're going to call that and that's going to get through to either the ambulance service, which is the one that we want, the police and also uh, the fire brigade as well. So they can come and help us. No, 112, again, goes straight through to the same place, but it just means it works in, it works in Europe as well. That's a really, really good knowledge room, so well done. Um, so either of those numbers will, will, will work. Now, what we need you to be able to do is actually to get onto Mummy and Daddy's phone or your the grown-up's phone. So we need to be able to unlock it. So what we're going to do, Alex is going to show you. He's got a couple of screen grabs here for you. So when you get hold of um, the, the grown-up's phone, so Alex, just get a little bit closer to it. Let's just steer you in here. So we should be able to see you here. So we are going to, that should look like uh, your grown-up's phone. Hopefully when um, somebody is um, somebody's not feeling well and we need to get hold of the emergency. Press emergency. You, yeah. So we're going to keep wiping the screen and keep pressing buttons until you get to a locked keypad screen. And there should be the word, what's the word, Alice? Emergency. Emergency. So we're going to press the emergency screen and then it's going to go onto it like that, okay? And then when you're on here, you press 999 or 112 and then you throw them and then they'll hopefully pick up pick up you. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Okay, so then that's going to go straight through to the emergency services, straight through, and we're going to ask for, what are we going to ask for? Which service? Help. Yeah, which service? Uh, we've got an ambulance. An ambulance, yeah, absolutely. And the and great then news is... you have to tell them where you are, so your, yeah. either your postcode or your address. Um, the, yeah, the big thing there, with when we get through to it, is that the person at the end of the phone is really well trained, and they're very, very well trained to help uh, children, um, to, to and adults as well, to deal with first aid situations whilst they wait for an ambulance. So don't ever be afraid, that person is there to help you. So as soon as we get onto the phone, what I want you to do is get mommy and daddy or the grown-ups there just to show you how their phones work. So that's um, it's really vital that the children know that um, and that's how we're going to get help uh, into the house. So brilliant. So now we've got, uh, we've got hold of uh, the emergency services and then we can get them on their way. Okay. Um, what would we call the ambulance for? What kind of things would we do? Okay, so we've got a question for you at home. Is it A, what does that say? That's a, William. A, a nose bleed. Is it B, Alex, that's yours? Um, someone who you can't wake up. Or is it C, someone with a broken arm? Okay, so. We're going to get you guys to shout out, okay? So keep shouting out. What's your answer? This one's a difficult one, this one. It's, Which one do you think? It's B, I think, because it's, it's something you can't wake one. up. But it's really hard, because someone with a broken arm is also really bad. Yeah. And, and it also it depends how bad the nose be is. Yeah. If it's, like, really bad, then you also need to call the ambulance. Exactly. This one was, uh, this was a really, really difficult one. The one that we would always call the ambulance for is with this one. Sometimes a nosebleed, and we're going to teach you how to deal with a nosebleed in one of the, the, the next lessons. Um, but the, the broken arm on sometimes, as a first aider, we can actually keep them comfortable and supported until we get them uh, to hospital ourselves. At the moment, the NHS are under lots of pressure, so we want to try and do as much as we can for them. Right, boys. Hi, as we've been looking at in the video, we've been talking about uh, calling 999 or 112. Um, just going to have a, a quick look at exactly the kind of thing that you're going to be asked. Um, the, the call handlers are really well trained, particularly with dealing with children, um, but they will get straight to the point. They'll try and help you assess the patient really, really quickly. Uh, the first question that you'll get asked when, when you've gone through to the ambulance service is, is the patient breathing? So they're going to help you check uh, on how serious it is. You don't really need to remember too much about this because the person at the end of the phone is going to guide you through it. We have, however, uh, just in the, uh, the links below the video, uh, we've got uh, some practice cards, so it's a PDF that you can download and it'll just give you different scenarios and you can do that with an adult, uh, with a grown-up so that they can uh, talk you through uh, what you would say in, in different situations. So give them a go, it's always really, really good practice. Obviously the information that you do need is, is where you are, so uh, where you live, your address is always really, really good uh, 
uh, to know, um, and particularly sort of when you're out and about. Um, obviously, when you call for help, the uh, the other grown ups will be really helpful with that. So one of our jobs as well is not just looking after the people physically, like we've been doing in the video so far. It's looking after them emotionally. Now, a lot of people when they're feeling not not very well or they've been injured feel quite vulnerable. So it's really really important that you keep very very calm uh, and that you reassure them constantly that they're going to be okay. Now, when people are injured, they'll they'll mirror you. So if you're panicking and you look scared, um, they will behave in the same way as well. So uh, it's very, very important that you keep them calm. For their medical health as well, it's really important that they stay as calm and as still as possible. We always want to keep people nice and still. Um, so make sure that we're reassuring them. Keep talking to them. Uh, tell them that everything's going to be okay. Tell them that the help that you've organised is on the way. It might be their parents. It might be the, at the ambulance. But keep talking to them. Sometimes because you're a close friend, uh, they'll they'll look to you for reassurance above the leaders that are, or the grown ups that you're looking at as well. So you can be a great help to the to the, uh, to the adults around you at this point. Um, Again, ask them, is there anything else that you can do that, can, that would make them more comfortable as well? So keep checking with them. And their situation changes as, as they're waiting as well. So keep going back, keep reassuring them. Uh, make sure that you keep them warm at all times. Don't give them anything to eat or drink as well at this point until you've been advised by a, a leader or grown up. So uh, yeah, you, you can really, really reassure them. So well done so far. Uh, keep going with the video. Okay, fab. Right, so when we've um, when we've got them on the way, we need to check our patient out. So, boys, do you want to grab your teddies now? Yeah. Grab your teddies at home, okay? So uh, we're going to practice on them now. So what we need to do first, if you get to someone and they are laying down, and not in a normal situation, obviously not in bed or anything like this, and we think that something's wrong, we, we first of all, we're going to check for danger. We're going to make sure that we're safe. We spoke about that earlier. And then we're going to check to see if we can wake them up okay we want to get a what's called a response from them so we're going to do something really cool and it's called shout and shake okay so that's what we've got to remember this one shout and shake right so yeah. i'm going to get the boys to demonstrate so boys can you wake your teddies up okay. Hello! Uh, i think that that might actually make the situation a little bit worse uh -huh. for you that's what we try not to do with birthday so oh, what we're going to do I to start with is <laughs> Because of, because of, and this one is you give a demonstration this um, you shout and shake with the teddy. Hello. So you can wake them up, okay? Hello. It's a gentle shake, okay? So we're going to gently shake them. Now, Hello. what I want you to do is, as well as shouting, give them something to do. So ask them to shout at them, open your eyes or open wake your, up. Open your eyes. Up. Okay, so I want you guys to be following easy. along with Alex at home and, and William. So see if you can wake Teddy up now and see if we can uh, get a response from that. Now, are they responding to us at the moment? Are we getting no, any response from Teddy? No, no, not at all. So what we've got to do now is we've got to uh, look to see if they're breathing. That's our next step. Now, what we used to do, and some of the mums and dads out there might remember this, and all the grown-ups, that we used to go down and check, get really close to them to check whether they're no. breathing. We're not doing that at the moment. We've got uh, some different guidelines at the moment with what's going on. So all we're going to do is we are going to look at uh, the patient and see what's happening, okay? See if you can see if they're breathing. So we want to see if they're, how would we do that, boys? What, how would you check? Their to see chest they're... would be moving up and down and up. Oh, their belly. Yeah, their breathing. belly, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So they might be breathing like that. So we're going to look to see if we can see for breathing. Now, is Teddy breathing? No. No? No? We've got no we breathing there. No. Right. So this means we need to start helping them. This is really important at this bit that we've already called 999 at this point. We need help from them, uh, from the paramedics when this happens. So it's make sure that we've already got a grown up on the way, or, uh, but we need the ambulance on the way, which is the important bit, so ring 999. So what we need to do now is we need to do something called CPR, okay? And we're going to start helping the person uh, until the ambulance so arrives at this bit, okay? start with it, um, you put this hand into in, your, your fingers. Yeah. And then put it on okay, the, so the middle of them. Alex, that's it. Into the middle of them. And for a help of you, you there's a song and it's Baby Shark. Wow. And it you goes up and stuff. it goes up to the end of Daddy Shark, probably. Right, okay. So we're just gonna set a timer for 30 seconds, okay? Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do CPR. So the boys did really well there. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna get our hands and we're gonna interlock our fingers, okay? And then we're gonna push right in the center of Teddy's chest. Not in the tummy, 
but in the chest here, right in the center, okay? So the boys have got their teddy, I've got Annie, okay? This is what we practice on in reality when we do first aid classes. Uh, and we're gonna do 30 seconds. And as Alex said, we want to be pushing down really hard and really quick. So, so basically we, we're gonna do 30 seconds and we're gonna sing Baby Shark. And do you think we get to, so who is it? It's Baby Shark, then is it Daddy Shark? Mom Shark, and then Daddy Shark, and then we stop. And then we stop, okay, so are we, we're gonna do that? Okay, so put that hand right in the center of their chest and we're gonna start singing Baby Shark and we're gonna push on the rhythm, okay? Three, so, two, one. Baby Shark, do 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 Baby Shark, do 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 Baby Shark, do 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 Baby Shark. Mommy shark do 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 Mommy shark do 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 Mommy shark do 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 Mommy shark Daddy shark do 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 Daddy shark do 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 Daddy shark do 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 Daddy shark Brilliant And we just keep going, keep going as long as you can Until they wake up hopefully Until they wake up or until the paramedics, uh, the ambulance oh, people come and come and help you. Okay, so that was wow, well done. That was really, really good, boys. I'm really impressed with your uh, with your CPR there. So, uh, so we've got CPR going, and just always remember the baby shark with them. It's really quick, and you you have to push really, really hard on, on, on their chest. So you can practice that at home. You can practice that on a cushion. You can practice it on uh, on your cuddly toys, but don't practice it on your brothers and sisters. Okay, don't do that on somebody for real. It so, could hurt them, couldn't it? So, uh, so we don't want to do that. Brilliant. Right, let's put, let's put teddies away at the moment. Right, we are now going to have a look at, so we've checked for our danger, and we've tried to wake the teddy up, and the teddy's not waking up, okay? Uh, but we look at them, and they are breathing this time. So we are going to put them uh, into a really safe position here. So I've got a question for you, boys. If somebody won't wake up, and they are, and we can see that they're breathing, do we put them on their back? Do we put them on their side? Do we put them on their front? Or do we put them on their head? On their side. side. On their side, yeah. Why would we put them on their side? Good, I like the buzzer coming in there. Yeah. <laughs> because probably in a better place for them, maybe. Yeah, it is, yeah. It keeps them safer. So it just means that it makes their breathing a, a bit easier. Uh, and if they do something when they're when they're uh, asleep, well, when, they, when we can't wake them up, um, if they're sick, uh, then the sick comes out of their mouth and it keeps them safe. So what we're going to do now is Alex is going to show us how to put somebody in this position. And so watch it this time, and then we're, I'm going to get William to put Alex in the recovery position. And whilst he's doing that, you can have a go with your friend, your sibling, uh, your grown-up at home, and get that sorted. So uh, okay. your friend shouldn't be with you at the moment. That's a very good point. Right, so Alex is going to move the nearest arm to him out of the way, and then he's going to lift up the furthest knee. And he's gonna keep his hand on that knee because if William wasn't uh, pretending, it would flop over to the side. And grab hold of that hand and put it down by the side of his head, Alice. And now we're gonna pull, keep, keep hold of his arm there because otherwise it'll flop. And then roll him over with this knee. And now this is really, really useful because if it's a grown up that you're having to do this on, by pulling on that knee, it means that you can roll somebody much bigger than you over. So it really, really helps. So Alex has just got his knee out of the way and he's got it into a 90 degree angle. What do we need to do with this chin, Alex? There we go. So if you just kind of come and kneel behind William now so everybody can, uh, can see. So William's on his side and his mouth's open so he can breathe really easily. Um, and he's all nice and supported now. He's not going to move anywhere, which we call this the recovery position. So if, if, whilst you're waiting for the ambulance, if they're breathing, we're going to... And it's uh, kind of the do. most important important position that's in first aid. It is, yes, really important. We practice this one a lot, don't we? Because so, doctors can easily yeah. get them out of us and they'll really help them. Yeah, exactly. So, if you two swap round, and I want you guys at home yeah, now to have a practice with this. Okay, so make sure that you're practicing. This is a really good one for us all to practice on a regular basis. So you have a go at home now, and then William's going to put Alex into the recovery position as well. Good job, so the nearest hand comes out, and the furthest leg goes up, and then grab his hand next to his head, and then roll in with his knee. Great. That's it, just pull on his knee, and he'll roll over there. Okay, and then this comes out. Fantastic. So again, we can see up. how easy it is. Now, we do this at, at uh, Cubs and Beavers, uh, and we've seen really small children 
rolling quite big leaders. And I, I remember doing this at, at one of our local schools at St. Edward's uh, First School. Uh, and the, the children were moving quite big adults in this. So it really, really works. So have we got a g- g- giggler there? Yeah, we have. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. So is that, is, is that comfy on the floor there, Alex? No, 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 no. I'm doing like drawing on the back. You're drawing on your back. Okay. That's, so, that's definitely what you don't do. So that was that was the recovery position. So that, so I hope hoping that you've all had a go at that at home. That one's one of the really, really uh, important things. So if one, if your grown up is at home uh, and you can't wake them up, whilst you're waiting for the ambulance, if they're breathing, because we check that then pop them into the recovery position as well. So, fantastic. So, what we first aid kits, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the bit that we know that we want to do, the gory bit, the blood. Okay, so we're we're going to to be having a look at this. So, I'm going to ask you now a question. Why is blood so important? Okay, and we're going to give you three answers. And so we want, uh, my technical manager is looking at the answers now. We'll see if anyone gets some. See, some it has so, lots of important should we, things. Should we start with A? Let's start with A. A, it's red because it's William's favourite colour. Okay, let me I'm going to bring these in so you can see these. Is it A because it's William's favourite colour? He's an Arsenal fan, that's why. Right. C, without a vampire. So like B? Oh yeah, B. Yeah. It carries lots of important things around the body. Is it B? So, just as Alex said, it carries lots of important things around the body. Without it, vampires would go hungry. Or is it C? Without it, vampires would go hungry. Okay, so which one do we think it is? Are we um, going to know the answers? Uh, uh, let's go with B. We think it's B. Absolutely. So, B really, really does a really, really important job. So blood carries lots of things around the body. It carries oxygen, which we need. It carries your food around to give your body energy. It uh, carries things around that fight infection. And it also carries things around that stop uh, the blood coming out. So if you injure yourself, cut yourself, the base stops the blood. It forms something called a clot. Okay, so it does loads and loads of really, really important things. Now, it gets around the body with a heart, okay? Lots of Bs, um, I mean, told you, a lot of you shouted B out. Awesome job, good first day. So it gets pumped around the body by the heart, which is a big pump. Now how that works is, we've got a water bottle here, which we're gonna show you how the heart works. So if you imagine that the water bottle is a heart, are you gonna do the squeezing? Okay. So a- Alex is gonna show you what happens. So when the heart squeezes, it pushes, the blood out of the heart and then the pressure takes it around the body so it does an amazing job that's called your circulation and the tubes that it carries it around are called arteries and veins now we've got a new worksheet for you at the end of the uh the session today so make sure that you remember that one veins and arteries they say they're the tubes that take them around okay so the blood is really really important so we need to be able to stop it from coming out of the body that's the really important thing so um, first of all like everything what's the most important thing we, we do before we treat anyone um look at danger. Look danger, for detectives. danger detectives yeah absolutely so we're going to check the scene and we've got to do our jazz hands on with oh, danger 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 um, one of the things that we need to do uh, we need to try blood can carry um, some germs in it, so we need to make sure that we're stopping that. How are we going to do that, boys? Gloves! All right, pop your gloves on then. Yeah. So if you can, and in your first aid kit, before you do anything with cuts, try and put your gloves on, okay? So first aid gloves. Blue's my favourite colour, so that's a good colour for us. He's an Arsenal fan. And who do we support? That's what I'm losing the Right, so we've got our gloves on, really, really important. Now, a lot of the time, if we bring a plaster on, um, you might not put your gloves on, but make sure that you wash your hands properly before we do it uh, and after we've treated them as well. Uh, and what song do we sing when, we, when we're washing our hands? Uh, no, um, uh, happy, happy birthday, birthday twice. twice. Brilliant, we're all expert hand washers at the moment. Right, so we are going to, uh, I'm going to have a look at what we do if somebody's cut. Um, so the first thing that we do is we check for danger. Now, because the person might be a little bit wobbly, if they're, if they're cut, they might feel a little bit faint, the biggest thing that we need to do is sit them down, okay? So put them on their bum before they fall down, okay? So either sit them down or lay them down so that they're not going to hurt themselves if they fall over, okay? And the next thing that we're going to do is I need to look at the wounds, okay? So we're going to have a look at it. So you can do this with Teddy. 
So all your grown up there. So make sure that we stick them down and then we're going to have a look at the wound. And I want to see if there's anything in it, anything stuck in there. It might be gravel or a thorn or glass or something like that. Um, and then we are going to, um, after that, we're going to put some pressure on it. And what's the three? What, what have um, you remember this? Press, press, press. Press, press, press. What I want you to remember to do, how we stop bleeding is we put pressure on it. We press, 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 okay? If you've got your gloves on, it might just be your hands that are doing that. Or we might use a bandage to do that as well. So we've got some bandages here. Now, what, boys, if we don't have bandages, what can we use? Um, uh, new roll, tea towel. and tea towel, okay. and some type. Some tights would do, a scarf would do, a tie, some, some clean, anything that's clean, yeah? And we put that on. So I want you to see if you can stop the blood on your grown-up or on your teddy. We're going to press, press, press. That's what they're the words I want you to remember. Press, 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 okay? Can you put pressure on, on Teddy's wound? Yeah? Brilliant. Well done. So we're going to press, 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 okay? That's how we stop bleeding. So sit them down, okay? Have a look at the wound to make sure it's okay. And then we're going to put pressure on it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do, we're going to get you guys to start bandaging some stuff up, right? The first thing that we're going to deal with is Alex now has got a graze on his knee. Okay? Oh, it's not sticking now. I think our glue's dried out. There it is. It's on the top. Fabulous. Right. So we've got, uh, we've got a graze on Alex's knee. So how would we deal with a graze? Uh, would you use a simple plaster? Yeah, absolutely. So grab, wipe wipe, it grab, grab me a wipe. That's it. To get all of the, um, uh, the like, if yeah. you or something, get all of the things that could cause infection out of the wound. That's it. And Perfect. then cover it up. So, so these, no more of the these are the little wipes that you get in your first aid kit. So we're just going to give the wound a wipe. If you do this, doing everything with your gloves on makes life a lot harder. One of the hardest things I ever have to do in first aid is actually put a plaster on somebody uh, when I've got gloves on. So we're going to clean the wound there. You're being such a brave boy, Alex. Well done, okay? And then we're just gonna get our plaster. We've got some really funky uh, children's plasters here. Look at those. Not your boring old skin colored ones. Yeah, those are boring. Yeah, and we're just gonna get a plaster. What are you doing there? You trying to blow your hand up? Yeah, it was working earlier. Do you remember that I can make a chicken out of gloves? Yeah. Yeah? Right, so we've got our plaster, and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna put that over the greys, and we're just going to make sure that it stays nice and clean. But that's great because it means Alex can go back outside and play and it will keep that, that nice and... With uh, my friends. Oh, you're taking that off already, yeah? Oh, you're going to put it back on. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's how we deal with just a small place. So we, uh, all we do is we clean it and then we cover it. Now, with William, we're going to do something a little bit more serious. So William has... Can I borrow a leg, William? A, a bad cut. He's got a bad cut on his leg. Do you want some fake blood? I don't mind a bit. Yeah, let's have a bit of face line. We all love a bit of gore in here. So um, so a bit of blood on this as well. So there we go. We've got quite a lot of blood all over us. That looks like ketchup. It does look like ketchup. You don't like ketchup, do you? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so we've got quite a bit of blood there. So what we're going to do is we've sat William down. We're going to put some pressure on it until the bandage arrives. Okay, so you can just use your hands with that. And then we're just going to use one of these, which is a normal bandage from your first aid kit. And we're just going to open it up until we get a pad, and we'll put the pad on there. Now, this might be a tea towel, so you could be doing this with your teddy. Alex, do you want to have a go at bandaging teddy? Okay. okay. There you go. You have a go at bandaging teddy whilst we do this. Okay, can you just move teddy, teddy away so the boys and girls can see? Okay, and so what we're going to do is we've got that, and it's, we've stopped it bleeding. Okay, so the pressure's worked. The only really important thing about bandages is that you cover the ends of them, because that stops. Will you, can you hold that for me? Just remember that patients are normally quite helpful as well. And then all we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the top and the bottom of the bandage is covered. Okay? So you can be doing this at home. You can use kitchen roll. Loo roll's not great because it disintegrates, but it's great for practising. Uh, you can use a scarf. You can use a bit of T-shirt. You can use anything. So use the cleanest things that you can, okay? So... When we've tied this round, we are now going to just tie a knot, okay? Just because we're training today, I'm going to tie a single knot. And we're just going to put that on there. So we've got all of the ends covered. Uh, the blood is stopped now. And so we're going to get William off. That was quite a serious cut. So we're probably going to take William to hospital now just to get that 
glued or stitched just so that they can have a look at it. So our bandage is really, when we tie a bandage, is to get the person to hospital, okay? Um, we don't kind of fix it, we don't glue it, we don't stick it, we don't stitch it, uh, but that's there to get them. So that will deal with pretty big cuts, to be honest. So just put lots of pressure on it until it stops bleeding. Uh, and then if we put a, a bandage on it, that will work. If it bleeds through this bandage, all we do is we put another one on top of it, okay? If it bleeds through that one, we want to really be thinking about calling an ambulance. And what do you remember the numbers for calling an ambulance? 999 and 512. Awesome, okay. But after it bleeds through the two bandages, we take them off and we put another one on and try and stop it that way, okay? So pressure, pressure, pressure. Press, press, press. They're the big words I want you to remember uh, press, with this one press, here. Press. press, 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 okay? So how are you doing with your bandages at home there? I hope we've got lots of teddies. And this is one of the things we really want to see lots of pictures. We had some amazing pictures, some amazing That's videos. Uh, and it was awesome, wasn't it? We looked at all of them, and it was really, really nice. And it's we actually cute. got to see some children having fun with us. Yeah, exactly. That was really important, wasn't it, as well? Uh, so, right, we're going to have a look now at uh, the ones up on there on, on your heads, okay? Uh, so, the bandages, can I borrow you, William? You. Yeah. So, okay. these bandages, when you undo them, when they come out of their packet, these little wings are always folded over like that. Now with the head one, if I do it like that, all the blood's gonna run down into my eye. So we just keep these little wings folded over and they'll actually come out of the packet like these. These are training ones that I use for my first aid classes. So all I'm gonna do is William's got uh, a bang to the head. Keep, keep nice and still for me. And this just goes over his ears and it goes under the bump in his head. And we've got another one if it's... Yeah, it's we've got loads bad. of bandages here, haven't we? Alex, do you want to do Teddy? Do you want to see if you can do a bandage on Teddy? Or are you going to do it on? Let me just show them properly and then you can have a go on William whilst they're doing their bandages. Why is someone doing on me? Oh, I think you're the expert patient. Yeah, and you get loads of bumps. To be honest, William, why do you think we're doing these on you? How many cuts to your head have we had to do this on? Uh, let's think. 100 times. Three. Three, three times. So William's had to go to hospital three times. For cuts to his head. So these are quite common. Um, so yeah, really, really important. So this is a really nice, easy bandage. Mm. And again, that, that's, my eyelids. that's it. So yeah, we can make that a bit more comfortable there. Just take it off his eyes. But the big thing is, is we've sealed the bottom of the bandage. So hopefully that blood's not going to pour into William's face as well. So that should really, really help. So uh, our head bandage, we hope that you're doing a really good job with Teddy or the grown-ups. We'd love to see loads of pictures with the grown-ups with looking a bit silly with their bandages as well. Mm -hmm. You right there, Alex? How are you getting on with Teddy? Good. Oh, that's an awesome bandage. Yeah, can I have a high five for that? Good job. Good bandage. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah. Yeah, you feeling better, better than that? <laughs> you think you look a bit silly? A bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You look really good, mate. So, brilliant. So that is our cut number three. So we've done our graze to the knee. We've done our cut leg, um, and now we've done our bandage to our head. So loads of practice at home. Practice really does make perfect. So if you've got small bandages, um, it's, it's really, really awesome to do it. Right. So we so, do now. I mean, I am. Well, we're going to do the, we're going to do the, the problem that Daddy's got, haven't we? So boys, what happens if you pick your nose? You get nosebleeds. Sometimes you get nosebleeds, yeah. Yeah, you because can... the artery, the, the veins get like cracked or something. Yeah, so you've and got lots like of cracked. little ones in your nose. So picking it or oh, having a bang to the nose, both of you guys play rugby, yeah? So uh, your old friend who has that a lot. Yeah, so we might get a nosebleed. So I'm going to have the nosebleed, okay? So this is me now. Let's have some fake blood so it looks real. Ugh, we like Halloween in this house, don't we? Yeah. Okay. So, I've got a nosebleed. Oh no! Gore, is this a gore? I think this might be a bit of a gore alert, is it? Blech. Right, so I'm uh, having. Gore alert! Yes, I think That's I've got quite a bad nosebleed. So, boys, you're the first ladies. What do you do to treat me? Pinch your nose. Pinch so, I'm going to pinch my nose, yeah. The soft the, part. The soft yeah, knees the the back. No, 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 no. Wait. Forward, we leave forward. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And then and take I, a bit of, a bit of tissue. Yeah. I'll oh. hold it at your bottom so the, yeah. as the blood drips. It will come to the tissue. And then after about 10 minutes, you can take your finger off. Yeah, after 10 minutes, yeah. And then just wipe the rest yeah. up with a wipe off. If it's stopped, great. If it's not stopped, do another 10 minutes. Okay. And we try again after 
another 10 minutes if that's still bleeding. If you've done that three times and it's not bleeding, they need to go to hospital or give get uh, the grown up to give uh, 999 or 111 a call and they'll be able to help them uh, with that one. But they'll need medical treatment. But normally they stop relatively easy, but it has to be for 10 minutes. Get the person to sit down and keep nice and still. But we pitch the nose. I want you guys to do this at home. So lean forward, pitch the nose, and give them something just to mop the blood up with it. Yeah. Uh, just that bit there. How am I doing with blood, Alice? Good. You still got a bit down there. Still got a bit down there, have I? Oh, it's okay. This is blood. This is blood. This is blood, yeah? yeah? So this, believe it or not, is how much blood is in a grown-up. Okay? Five litres of blood. Now, what happens is we can... Can you just... Um, chuck me the um, washing up bowl. There we go. Yeah. So we can look at all that blood, everyone. We can lose about a third of the blood out of our body before we start to get really, really poorly. So about that much blood. Now, what might happen if you're looking after somebody and they've had a bad cut? they might start to feel really faint and they might start to go kind of a grey pale colour and that means that the blood there's not enough blood in their body like this yeah. to get the blood to their head to their where their is brain it, is. Isn't that the hardest place to get it? It is. This is has to pump it up. To pump and it up. That, the really, really. Gravity. So if you can see in the bottle now, the head up here where the cap is isn't getting blood. So yeah, what we need to do as the first day we need to blood to uh, to work. To work, yeah. yeah. To work. Yeah. yeah. So what we need to do is we need to get blood to the head. So we put the person on the floor, we lay them down. I'm going to do this with Alex in a minute. Like this. And then you can see the blood is getting to the head. We can make that even better by putting their legs up in the air. So if we get Alex up here, okay, so Alex, if you lay down. And I'm just going to use my first aid kit here. And I'm going to put his legs up in his air. Now, all that blood is going to flow into his body, okay, because he doesn't need the blood here at the minute, and it's going to get to his brain. All right, so that is the position. If somebody, and you might want to remember this is the worksheet, uh, is that if somebody is not feeling very well when they've been bleeding and they've gone pale and they feel faint, that we lie them down on the floor, right. put their feet up in the air, just needs to be 15 to 30 centimetres or up on a chair or something like that, and we keep him warm, we're going to put a blanket over him. It's quite comfortable. It's quite comfortable, isn't it? And then we're going to wait for the ambulance to come and help him, okay? Because he's really, he's really quite poorly now. Okay, so it's really important. We know what to do with somebody when they're bleeding. So just remember the big things. We keep ourselves safe. We put the gloves on if we need them. You can, yeah. Uh, we sit them or lay them down. We're going to check the wound to make sure if there's anything in there. And then we're going to press, press, press is the big thing that we need to remember. Yes, press, press. Okay, fabulous. Right, so we really, really hope that you guys know how to deal with bleeding now. So it's really, this is one of the things that... All boring things. Yes. When, we, when I teach people first aid, a lot of the things we, we expect for people not to have to do, but we, I always tell them... We, with, with bleeding, it is something that you do need to know how to do it, okay? Because in a normal life, you you, do, you get little cuts, we get raises and all that sort of stuff. So we hope that you, you know how to deal with that now. Hi, me and the boys are going to move on to asthma now. So you might notice a bit of a jump in the clip now. Uh, this was filmed on a week where we, we, we did a science experiment. So we went in as crazy professors. Our hair was a bit wacky and wild. So if you're just wondering all of a sudden why my boys have got coloured hair and I've lost a bit at the front and I've gone a bit wild, it's because we were doing, uh, having a bit of fun there. So don't worry about that. We're going to move on to the asthma section. Really, really straightforward. I hope you enjoy it. So wheezing. So we're going to talk about asthma now. So do you know what asthma is, boys? Uh, it's when, isn't it, um, it's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's like you need medications to help you with your breathing. Yeah, absolutely. So asthma. Asthma is where people have got a condition that makes breathing difficult sometimes. Um, and they take medic medication to make this easier. And there are lots and lots of people in the UK. It's over one and a half million people in the UK Rabbit. that have asthma. Yeah. So we, a lot of people that we know. Yeah, so most time at school, 
Yeah, we, we know people that have got asthma. Yeah. So it is common. Now, because it's really common, we tend not to think it's very serious, but it can be really, really serious. So it can kill you. So we need to be, yeah, we need to know what to have do. One so, what, so what happens is, on our normal breathing, we've got a tube like that, and it's really, really, it's, it's wide enough and we can get enough air in. It would be like trying to have an asthma attack, would be like trying to breathe through the straw instead of breathing through the tube. So their That's tubes right. get inflamed and they get narrower and narrower. And in an attack, that. the muscles around the tubes can constrict yeah, and, and stop their breathing. Smaller and smaller. It's smaller and smaller. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and then they can just end up with no Yeah, yeah. apparently yeah. having an asthma attack is like trying to breathe through a straw. So you just I can't get enough air. No, we're not going to do that. You'll, you'll go really light headed. Um, okay, so. What, how will we know um, if somebody's having an asthma attack? How would you know, do you think? Um, well, the, 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 like, so they'll start breathing normally and then they'll, and they'll get heavier and heavier and they'll start wheezing more and more. Wheezing is the noise that they make, yeah. So it's a really kind of muscular noise uh, and it's a very active sort of breathing. At the moment, we're just breathing Don't nice and normally. Don't of people have... Me walking around, we have asthma. Yeah, we're going to get those. Can you get those asthma then, Alex? Get all the asthma stuff out. So, the noise that we think that they're going to have is this. It's like a really wheezy noise. Uh, and one of the other classic signs is that they can't make a sentence as well. So, they might, you might ask them if they've got their medication, and the noise that they'll make is. So, they can't make a full sentence sometimes. They might have a really tight chest. Um, and we might start to see their lips going blue. So what, what might their lips going blue tell me? Don't worry, because this has got the lid on. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Lips going blue. Yeah, what might like, that tell me? Okay. Wouldn't it tell me that they've got asthma? Yeah, it might be, but it, it just means that they're, they're, they're oxygen in their system. We talked about how the blood carries oh, oxygen oh, around. Well. It can do, so that could be cold, which we're going to deal with next week. But yeah, so it could be that they're having an asthma attack. So um, it's very, they get very tired as well with their breathing. So. If we spot somebody that's having an asthma attack, boys, what do we do? Get their asthma. Yeah, we ask them where their medication is. Now, they will normally carry a couple of types of pumps. Oh, you've really done that in there now. I'll tell you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so yes. to, normally uh, they've got a traditional sort of colour band, but the, but the asthma inhalers do come uh, in different colours and different shapes as well. Now, the blue one is normally the one that we want to get them. This is the one that relieves their asthma and makes it a little, little bit better, okay? So some of the time, you're yeah, absolutely right, William. This is the preventive one. So this is the one that they take um, in the morning as their medication to stop them having what asthma attacks. What happens if they like, lose their asthma thing? Well, if they lose their asthma thing, and or if we ask them and they haven't got their medication and they're yeah. struggling to breathe and they're wheezing, it's a brilliant question, Alex. We're going to call the ambulance, okay? So we need to take that really, really seriously. So we're going to let them take a couple of puffs of their medication. They'll know how to do this. Uh, and then we're going to wait for a couple of minutes and then they might need to take a couple more. No, but it's for instructions. Obviously, we're going to get a grown up here. But after about five minutes, if it's not getting Sorry, any better, we need to call an ambulance. So you get so, this and you open it and then you put it in there. So these, they might ask you to get something called their spacer. Now, this is just a device that makes it a bit easier. As Alex sort of um, jammed it in there earlier, um, we, they just fit these into these devices and it just makes it a little bit easier to breathe. So if they ask you to get their spacer, they'll look something like this. So all we can do is get their medication for them. Now, what position do you think, boys, to make it easier for them to breathe, we would want them in uh, at this time? Sitting, on, like, Sitting down. Like Go and grab a chair. Go and grab a chair to bring it on to the mat here. Like, okay. So there's like, a reason that I've got two. So just come here so we can see them. Put that one in front of you, Alex. Okay. And now I want you just to cross your arms, will you? And just lean on there. Okay, and that's the position that we want somebody in who's having an asthma attack. It just their chest is really open and it makes it a lot easier for them to breathe. Yeah, you have a go over. So we've got a couple of do's and don'ts with asthma. Okay, so don't use the medication if you don't have asthma. Sorry, don't use the medication. If you Obviously, don't have if you asthma. don't have asthma, don't use any medication. Like, yeah, that why would be a really good in this position when you've got asthma? Because it makes it easier to breathe. So, what we do do is that we sit them down and we get their medication 
And what we don't do is don't lie them on the floor. That makes their breathing more difficult to breathe, okay? And what we don't do, which we sometimes think might be the best thing, is get them out into the fresh air. So sometimes the change in the temperature or the change in the humidity uh, can actually make it worse. So don't do the fresh air thing. We just want them sitting on their bum, leaning forwards, uh, and get their medication for them. So that's how we deal with asthma. So, um, right, then look at burns now. We do have a bit of a gross alert, uh, a gore alert uh, today. So burns, the biggest thing with burns is don't burn yourself, okay? Our, our danger detectives are really important on this, aren't they? So what kind of uh, things can burn us? Oh, soup that just come out of the... Uh, out of the microwave, I think it came out of the Yeah, that came with uh, yeah. I touched a, a, a hob that I thought was cold, but it was actually hot. Yeah. It just be gone. So it's hot things. Stupid. Yeah, so hot things. Hot food, hot water, hot drinks. Cold things, cold things. yeah. Do you, want, do you want to pass the... We, we've got a question here for you. So um, we want to see some answers on the board. So send your answers in. So um, what can burn us? So answer A is... Answer William. Something hot, cold, or chemicals. B. A Chinese burn from my brother. Playing too many Xbox games. Are you sure that that could burn you, William? Xbox games? Because mm -hmm. you're the expert at playing too many, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? So what do we think the answer is? Is it A, something hot, cold, or chemicals? Is it B, a Chinese burn from my brother? Believe it or not, there was one this morning. Um, and, <coughs> and C, what's yours, Alex? A. Playing too many Xbox games. So, so, our studio manager, what answers are we getting there? A. We're getting lots of A. Brilliant. It is hot, cold, and chemicals can burn us as well. So, um, with that, loads and loads of different things. Cold things can burn us as well, which we tend not to think about that. Believe it or not, again, my boys have been a brilliant example this week. We had a cold burn in the house this week. Alex, what happened? <laughs> with the ice on you and your tongue. Oh. So I was eating an ice lolly Not and really my tongue it, yeah. got stuck to the ice lolly. Absolutely. No, you were kind of trying to get your tongue to stuck, you were like... <laughs> but it was, it was completely stuck to the ice lolly. I've never but seen one. I couldn't take it off. I've never seen one like that before and it literally wouldn't come off. Um, but we'll tell you how we treat that when we treat it with burn. So hot it's and up. cold, we treated it with water, didn't we? Absolutely. Um, and also chemicals as well. So you, things like bleach, um, uh, so chemicals can, can burn your skin as well. So... Um, the depth of the burn, what we're going to have a look at, when we look at a burn to see how serious it is, we're going to have a look at a couple of things and we're going to show you a gross alert, okay? So if you get something like sunburn, which is red skin, okay, with no blisters, we can normally deal with those at home, okay? We deal with them all the same way. Now, if you get something where you get blisters, okay, they're a bit more serious. It really hurts, yeah? Absolutely. So But we might get something, and this is where our gross alert is, so either way, this, you might get a burn that looks like this, okay? So pretty, pretty grim. Now this has gone through the skin and you're starting to see what's underneath it. Now, that is a gross alert and Alex really doesn't like that, do you, Alex? So, now, we've got to have a look at burns, uh, see how big it is. With a child, anything, if it's broken the skin, anything bigger than a 50 pence piece, we're gonna get them to hospital, okay? Really, really important burns. And probably the thing in first aid I don't like the most. Um, they get infected really quickly. They scar really badly. They're quite yeah, painful. Yeah, really, really painful. So we're going to have a look at how we treat it. Now, the biggest thing with burns is if you can put some gloves on, um, try not to breathe on it, they get really infected. Um, but cool water, cool, cool water. We want to get to the tap, not cold water, cool water. So we've not got the tap here, obviously. So William's going to treat my really, really bad burn. And so we're just going to use this and just get some water on it. So I want you at home, I know you guys have got water here, and we're gonna keep doing this. So keep doing it, keep keep cooling that down. And what we do is we just make it cooler, and the burn stops, starts to hurt less, and it will stop doing damage, because if we leave it, the burn will get worse and worse and worse and worse. Really, really important. Too you to get Absolutely, so that's a really good point. So if somebody's really badly burned, we don't want to stick them under a cold shower. We just want to cool the burn, not cool them, because you could put them into hypothermia. Which and how long are we going to do this for, boys? How long are we going to do? 20 minutes. But we're, if they start, it's too cold, we kind of recommend it. 
Well, apps, yeah, so we've got to keep them warm whilst we do this. Twi- a minimum of 20 minutes to cool that down. And then when we've done that, yeah, cling film from your kitchen drawer is the best dressing for, for, for this, okay? So all we would do is it's sterile, but the bit that's been in our kitchen drawer is not sterile, so we're going to tear that off. And now we're going to just layer it really loosely. So don't wrap it around tight, Alex. Oh, I've forgotten one thing. If they've got anything like this, take, take it, off. it off. Okay, we want to get anything that might, when it's going to swell shock. up. It could cause an electric shock as well. Because okay, the water so just tear it now. Okay. There we go. And so that's what that's done now, is just by putting it loosely over the burn, we've actually created a layer of skin, which is going to stop that getting infected and then we would be able to get them off to hospital. Okay, so two or three layers just of your skin, but don't wrap it round really tightly because otherwise that's going to swell up and it might start to restrict the blood, and, the circulation that we talked about like on this. session two. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they, they might not like that. Yeah. So burns. If you can remember that for the worksheet, definitely twenty burns, burns. a minimum of twenty minutes or until it stops hurting. So, okay, so we've had a look at how to deal with the burns in the home. Uh, we treat all burns exactly the same, so with uh, cool water. Now, we're just going to have a quick look at what to do when we're out and about. Obviously, as beavers, cubs and scouts, we like to spend as much time as uh, we possibly can in the outdoors. One of the biggest burns that we see when we're out and about is sunburn. Uh, it's really, really serious. We have to take the sun uh, really, really serious. We can, I've seen some really nasty blistered burns uh, when young people are out and about. So always, always we're just going to be preventative. We're always going to take really, really strong factor uh, 50 uh, suntan lotion. Make sure that we're applying that regularly, but really, really important. You'll just enjoy more of your camp, more of your days out if you're not burned. So make sure that that goes with you. Um, now, when we're out and about, obviously getting clean, sterile water to cool the burns down with can be quite difficult. So it's important that the first aid kits that we're carrying have got the appropriate kit in it. Now, if I'm at home, I will always, always choose cool water and cling film over the uh, burns dressings that you might find in first aid kits. But when we're out and about, these things really, really do come into their own because I can put this directly onto the burn uh, and that will keep it cool until we get the person to hospital or until they receive medical treatment. So uh, that's just one type. Uh, so burn dressing there uh, and another type is just a burn soothe as well. These are really, really good. So make sure that you do have these in your first aid kits when you are out and about and camping. Uh, they can be invaluable when we don't have a good water supply. So well done, you've watched the video, you've done the practical work for stage two now. All we need you to do is to print off the worksheet, fill that in, make sure you get all of that done, print off the certificate and get your grown up to validate that, to say that you've done everything that you need to do and that can be handed into your leader and they'll be able to award you your stage two emergency aid badge. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. First aid is a lot of fun. So if you get uh, time to do that with your group, uh, make sure that you get involved with all the practical work. Keep an eye out on our channel for level three, which we'll be uh, producing in the next few weeks. Uh, and hopefully you'll join us again. But thank you so much and good luck.